So let's start with type 8 my dear friends. The only difference between in type 8 and the previous case is that over here you have two loops and all the variables are an unknown value. For example, in earlier case you have the value for resistance. For example, 3 ohms, 4 ohms and so on. But in this case you will be having only R. All the resistance, capacitor and inductor will be named as it is in the terms of variables. So in that case, your sums become little difficult. So let's have a look how to solve this kind of sums. So it's given, assuming all the initial condition are zero, you need to find all these terms. So let's start with our three steps. First, it will be at t equal to zero minus condition. When I say at t equal to zero minus condition, my dear friends, that means the switch will come down only at t equal to zero plus. That is the definition of this arrow. If I say at t equal to 0 minus, that means this switch will become open. If this switch is open, your circuit will look in this format. Plus minus V. This switch is open at t equal to 0 minus R1. Capacitor. Resistor. Inductor. Your C. If your switch is open, my dear friend, so there will be no sources attached to this circuit. If there is no source, that means in both the cases, I1 as well as I2, my dear friend, will be equal to 0 amps. So let's start with second case. This is the value which we obtained that was at t equal to 0 minus condition. So let's start with at t equal to 0 plus condition. When I say my brothers at t equal to 0 plus condition, I mean the switch will go down. If switch will go down, that means it will complete the circuit. So let's see what happens when it completes the circuit and how the capacitor and the inductor should be here. Because it is already mentioned that all the variables are in the initial states. Assuming all the variables are the initial states. None of the variables are in steady state. So let's do it. So your circuit will become plus minus V. The switch will closed. You have a resistors R1. Then you have a capacitor. The capacitor is already in initial state. That means it is not charged. If it is not charged, that means it will accept current to get it charged. To accept current, the circuit have to be closed. That means the capacitor will be a short circuited. Now, you have a resistance R2, then you have an inductor. So it is mentioned that inductor is in the initial state. That means none of the current has been flowing to inductor. So if now, if you push the current into inductor, initially inductor will resist. So that is nothing but resistivity, right? So inductor won't allow the current to flow instantly. So if it doesn't, doesn't allow, that means your circuit will become open circuit. So let's observe so the circuit. The important point in the circuit is that none of the values are given to you. Neither resistors, neither inductor, neither capacitor. In spite of values, my dear friend, the variable term, the constant term is given to you. For example, for instance, the value is given R, inductor the value is given L. For capacitor, the value is given to you. So some of the things that we have done is that we have numbers that we have numbers that we have numbers the simplification will become much easier. But when you have a variable function, the simplification will become much easier. So just you just take care of less and less and less and less and less and less. So that's the only thing. The rest of it is very similar. So the initial condition is given as zero. So there is no steady state. So let's solve it. You have to find all the six parameters in my definition. I1 0 minus. I2 0 minus. I1 0 plus. I2 0 plus. DI1 upon DT. DI2 upon DT. D square, 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 and so on. Let's start with T equal to 0 minus. When I say T equal to 0 minus, I mean by, my switch is open. The arrow, given as it shows, it will go down only when I T equal to 0 plus, right? So at T equal to 0 minus, my different arrow will become open as it is. So, your circuit will look in this format. Since there is no source connected, so there will be no current source flowing. So current values will be 0. At t equal to 0 plus the switch will get closed. When switch closes, my dear friends, 
the capacitor is not at all charged if it is not at all charged it is an initial condition it will allow the current to flow when it allows the current to flow it will give it a path that means it will short circuit so it is a short circuited path so you have an inductor over here since it was an initial condition there was no current flowing in inductor so when you initiate a current flowing to inductor it will oppose the current when it oppose the current that means it will short circuit the branch so inductor is short circuit or oh, sorry it will open circuit because it will oppose the current so it will open circuit because it will allow the current to flow through it so it will open circuit so if you see the both this part i1 and i2 so since the circuit is open my dear friends so i2 will be zero and your i1 you just need to apply by kvl apply kvl directly you will get the value for i1 so once you get the value for i1 and i2 let's go for t greater than 0 plus when i say t greater than 0 plus my dear friends you have no short no open circuit parameters everything parameters will be as it is so take the circuit as it is only difference will be that switch will be closed apply mesh in both the equations if you apply mesh in both the equation this is what the equation you will be getting in equation number a kvl r1 into i1 in capacitor there are two currents flowing since we are writing for mesh one so mesh one current will be first minus mesh two current difference because both the direction are different so it will be equal to this so i need to find da1 i1 upon dt so there is no di1 upon dt so let's differentiate this part if i differentiate this i will be getting di1 upon dt r1 will be constant differentiation and integration will get cancelled so you will be getting 1 upon c bracket i1 0 plus minus i2 0 plus equal to v is constant so derivative of v will be zero so so i'll be getting di1 upon dt the value will be minus v upon c r1 square so the current unit is amperes time is second so ampere per second so let's apply kvl in equation number 2 when i apply kvl in equation number 2 my dear friends so i'll be getting this equation so put the values so you'll be getting d square upon dt square so kvl in equation number 2 this equation you get it my dear friends simplify it you will get d1 upon dt2 so value of d i put upon dt is nothing but amperes per Yes. Simple calculation, very simple. As it is, what we did in previous case. Now let's find d i two upon d t square. If I differentiate b part, I'll be getting this equation, my dear friends. So differentiate, we'll be getting d square upon d t square. Put the values, my dear friends, in it. So you'll get the simple, simplified equation for d i two upon d t square. That will be minus v upon and so on. So that's what the x. Network said you have to find the following values: i1 zero plus, i2 zero plus, d i1 upon d t, d i2 upon d t, d square i1 upon d t square, d square i2 upon d t square. That was the following things which were asked in the question. So I hope you need to practice the following sums at your place itself because this is what which you look at the video you get it. You have to solve by looking at the videos. That is the proper way to get this kind of sums. Thank you so much signing off